Hello, um, I'm Scott Causey. I'm in my studio here in Sarasota, Florida. We've had a few technical difficulties, but yeah. hopefully we figured it out. Um, I'm doing, a, I'm gonna do a demonstration of um, how I sculpt my animals, or actually how I break my animals apart. Um, I, I've been doing Rittenhouse for at least over 12 years, and uh, I show up normally on uh, Rittenhouse Square um, across from the Savoy, and um, I'm I'm going to show you guys uh, around my studio. I'm I'm sure that I've forgotten some other things, but uh, I'm going to show you uh, some of the finish work that I have over here. Um, but this is pretty much where where Jody and I uh, work uh, every day of the week. <laughs> so. Um, Hello everybody, I'll be joining Scott today. I'll be behind the camera, so you'll hear my voice a lot because I'll probably be helping answer a lot of the questions since we work together. So Scott's now going to show you um, about his work and tell you a little bit about the process uh, before we really get into the meat of it all. So here he is. So what I do when I, when I sculpt a piece, I'll either um, use a razor and cut it apart while the clay is still soft, or I'll take a hammer like this one or a mallet like this one, and then I'll actually uh, break the piece apart into pieces. So. And why do you do that, Scott? Why do you break them apart into pieces? The reason I break my pieces into pieces, there's quite a few different good reasons, but um, the main reason to begin with is because a lot of my glazes, like my cadmium reds, um, they actually don't fire real well with glazes that contain copper and uh, this cadmium red is actually a separate piece from this turquoise right here because this turquoise right here does contain a little bit of copper but um, the other reason is is it allows me to make pieces that are actually larger than the kilns that I own Here's the, body. Um, the body here of this, of this bear you can see, if you could look inside of it, you'd see all the different sections and parts to it. This bear's body has a lot of different sections, even some small pieces. But um, getting to that, I will actually uh, introduce you to my cat, who's gonna be the uh, next, uh, next piece of sculpture. Um. So. We also want to let everybody know that if you have any questions along the way as Scott's working and showing what he's doing, um, feel free to ask them and we will try to answer them if we can. You won't be interrupting. Um, yeah. You know, we're going to work on this together. Um, before we get started on the cat, there's some more of the pieces that we have um, that we typically show. All these pieces will be on our website as well. Um, after a show so I'm gonna move in so we can see Scott who is going to show us how he as you can tell we don't do this for a living <laughs> <laughs> let's hope we don't have to for too long <laughs> for a living we don't do video <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. so what I'm doing is just first of all I have to wear gloves because if I'm not wearing gloves when I do this there is a tendency for me to um, cut my hands. And Scott, what kind of clay is that? That's this made is out of low fire white earthenware. And uh, what I've done is, after I sculpted the piece, it's actually either cut apart or, or made into sections, and then I'm casting it. But this is an actual cast, but otherwise it would be way too thick. And just so we can see. This is what people always love: how you can take something so perfect and then. There's been a lot of sanding to get to get it to perfect. <laughs> but all right, so here we go. And it never, you know, you'll see me break. It's going to break in another, probably through here. Who knows? I always have to be careful because I don't like to damage my tail too much. And he has to listen for the sounds because the sounds when he's breaking it gives him a lot of information on where it's breaking and what's going on. So. So. Here we go. Oh. See? Told yep. you. Not out of the time where you hit it. So. There you go. Another little 
technique I use. If I want to get it to crack in a certain spot. I heat it up till I hear a little tink like that. That means people are watching if you want to just let us know with a hi hello um, that would be great just so we know who's here and um, Scott we had a question um, yes. for you to tell us how you develop this technique of the controlled destruction <laughs> uh, well um, there are a few different things um, when I was still in art school well actually before I went to art school I was going on um, took a trip to Washington DC and I was walking through the Renwick Gallery and I saw this artist's work and I was very impressed by it. His name was Rick Dillingham and uh, he's passed away since then but he, um, he did these oil cans and these vessels and things and one of the things I noticed is not only the great colors because he was using Raku at the time um, but I also picked up on the fact that he was breaking things, that he was breaking things and glazing them and putting them back together in a different order. Now, at that particular time, I didn't, I didn't go home and start doing that. I, I just put it in my uh, toolbox as, hey, that's an interesting technique. <laughs> and so when I finally got to Ringling, <laughs> When I finally got to Ringling School of Art and Design, I, um, I needed to be able to uh, make, make the piece of sculpture and use a lot of glazes that I wouldn't normally use. Um, and so I was using this technique and I noticed that the half my glazes would turn out and the other half would not turn out. And I was so frustrated, I went back to the, the place where I bought my glazes from and. I asked them, you know, what happened to, um, you know, what happened to these glazes? And the guy said, well, obviously, you're not reading the instructions. And so when I started reading the instructions and understanding exactly how, you know, what it was going to be, like, I had to have this one in this kiln at this temperature, this glaze at, you know, another temperature, and it wasn't like uh, just dipping a, you know, a vase or a coffee cup into a vat and pulling it out. It was, it was a lot of, a lot of learning curve. Okay. Before you keep breaking it, Scott, we've had a couple of questions. I think people maybe started a little later and asking why we were disconstruct, deconstructing it. So that's why, um, that's part of the reason, you know, how Scott came up with this. But the main reason is different glazes require different temperatures. They need to be fired in different places in the kiln. Some glazes aren't chemically compatible with each other, like Scott was explaining. Um, when you see, like, say, the gold on, let's see here, on the head of the swan here, that has to be fired a couple times, and it gets fired at a much lower temperature, say, than um, the red head of the dog over here. Um, so that's why we are, we take them apart, and then... In the end, we put them back together again. Hey, Scott, will you go ahead and pick up that cap so you can show like how far you've gotten on it? Because he does each section, because when he was talking, you know, he might have missed. So we've got this much of the cat already deconstructed. Take, take apart. Um, and as he's doing it, he will get hairline fractures, which will allow him, you know, more breaks. Every time we break it, they never, ever break the same. Never once, mm. they're always one of a kind originals. The clay we use just as our canvas um, for our pieces and our gla glazing and um, techniques. Um, so Scott's going to keep taking. Scott's going to keep continue taking this apart. I see a couple of questions coming up. How do you make the dots and stripes? And ah, why don't we'll talk about that? Let's finish breaking this piece, and then we're going to show you a little bit about what we do and how we do that. So, oh, listen to that. <laughs> And when he does this along the way, sometimes he'll get some really small pieces that will separate and make gold. So let's see that leg there, Scott. Yep. <laughs> I 
I'm always going along and so now he has to look and see where up oh, see there was a hairline fracture there so that's another piece that he just took off I can't believe that tail's still on there <laughs> but as you can see everyone always thinks these pieces are so fragile but I mean you can see he's hitting them pretty hard to get these pieces to come apart That's when I switch over to this one. And now he's using, instead of using the hammer end, he's using the handle end of his hammer, and that's when he's really getting serious. And when he's hitting it like that, he's listening for the noise because it makes a different noise if it's weaker um, in different areas. So. And um, Kyle asked a question, have you ever hidden secrets inside? I and guess. that is a great question because we took a wedding present to a friend in Italy um, this year for a wedding last July. And what was funny is we actually carried the piece over there in the separate pieces and then reconstructed it when we got there. And we stuck a note in there that said, you're only going to see this if your rabbit breaks and we <laughs> will fix it for you. <laughs> so we did put a note inside. Um, we, we've had that. We've had people ask if they could put their pet's ashes inside before, which is kind of an interesting one um, that we could do. Um, but, yeah, you can put little secrets in there. and But we typically don't, but we could. I've left a lot of blood on the inside of these. So. <laughs> these pieces are so sharp. As you see, that's why he's got the glaze on. So now he's continuing to work on this body. You know, they always say you should stop. <laughs> You're still ahead. Yeah, but everyone likes seeing stuff get broken. I know. I'm gonna go ahead. Just nerve wracking. Yep. Not quite ready. I've used this hammer for over 30 years. This very, this very hammer. Now the the mallet has been uh, been changed out a few times, but this part. Yeah, Scott's been a very fortunate artist. He's actually been doing, being a self-employed, fine ceramic artist, studio artist for the last, say, 32 years now. Um, his claim to fame is he's never worked for anybody else, or so he says. So <laughs> We do work together, so he might say he works with me. but <laughs> um, So, yeah, so he's, I guess there must be a hairline fracture in that one, Scott. So you're trying to break it again? See, Why don't you come close and maybe you could show us if there is so one, if you can see it. There's not really a hairline. There's there's one through here, but my biggest thing is uh, when when the when I break something apart and it creates a C, um, when it fires in the kiln, people are often asking me, you know, how do I keep things from warping so much? Well, it's a little bit of understanding what what the clay is going to do when it gets hot again. And uh, one of the things that I like to avoid is a, a C shape um, because it'll tend to close um, unless I put a brick in there to keep it from happening. But at this particular time, I, I just would rather get rid of it and not have to have to deal. So you can imagine how he's taking this all the, apart. There's no numbers to put this back. So in a few minutes, we're going to see how the next step goes where... And there's a mosquito. Oh, there's always mosquitoes. We live in Florida. All right. Is it all broken now, Scott? It is all broken now. Okay. So and now so what we're going to do is move in and we're going to show how... I put it back together. So at this point, what he'll do is he's going to take, um, put the piece back together using tape. So we're going to reform it because then that's when Scott will decide um, what colors and where he's going to put dots and stripes and all of that. So then that's when he begins his painting on the clay. Um, we had a question yes. um, about this uh, dragon that's up at the top of our thing. Um, no, Scott did not make that dragon. A friend of ours made that, and um, that's like our studio dragon that's been sitting up there for a long time. So it's, it's been up there for ages. Yeah, we have we have a lot of you know different silly stuff around our studio, but that is one. It's a pretty cool dragon though. But I know I told Scott one day he needs to just break it and put it back together and glaze it. So. <laughs> 
All right, so I'm gonna get a little closer here so you can see what he's doing here. All right. So and normally when I'm doing this the whole time, I mean, I'm gonna go through this a little bit faster than I normally would, but normally I will uh, just take a piece of sandpaper and go across all my edges. Because they are very sharp. Yep, they can be sharp. Uh, sharp as a razor. Okay, and then over you can see to his right where the cat is sitting He's got all these little pieces of tape that are stuck on the side that he prepared So as he starts now, he's going to tape the piece back together so we can see where the lines are where then he'll pick his colors um, Yeah, somebody here said that sometimes they can hear like something rattling around inside of their piece That's very likely that is very likely Kyle because many um a lot of times little pieces get stuck in there and you can't get them out when they're broken they go down inside and so you know occasionally you do so it does make it you know yep you get a little uh, a little rattle a little rattle and... sometimes it gets down into areas where i can hear it in there but i can't get it out there's no way to get it out so because i'm normally just shaking it shaking it come on out <laughs> no. but So what I'm showing you right now as far as putting it back together, this is kind of a, kind of a speedy job because I don't want to bore you guys. <laughs> but I also have to make sure that it does stay together when I get these yeah, legs on there. Yeah, you need enough there. tape on there that he'll stand back up. And then we'll get really close to it in a few minutes so you can see where the lines are and how he'll do it. Um, so... We really, it's very exciting right now that Rittenhouse um, Square Art, Art Association Festival did um, put this on for us. They have been working so hard to do the Facebook Live and the Zoom meetings and stuff they've done. And There's no way to say how much we appreciate how, it. Yeah, we the appreciate it because at this point, you know, the June show's been canceled. We'll see if we're there. Hopefully we'll be there in September. Um, and as artists, all of our shows right now have been canceled all the way through September right now. So, and, you know, when this is the way you make your living. So, um, Rittenhouse, just what a gift they gave artists to put this on for us and let people know what we're doing and know what we have available. And we have our website, scottcausey.art. Everything on there is available right now. The most of the pieces on there, we've redone it and put all of our inventory. There's um, a few of the hanging pieces that we have here right now that have not been not yet been put on the website but hopefully we'll get them up there soon yeah, got these guys the frog and the dog so oh you know what we forgot to put out scott that we do not have is, the lion. is our new lion we have we finished a lion right before all this craziness started and we don't have it out today but it is on the website so please check it out um because it's our newest piece and it's absolutely fantastic um so scott's getting this boy scott you're getting it back together pretty fast well i don't want people <laughs> to get bored <laughs> i'm gonna try but um the decision making as far as how the colors go back on uh usually takes me a few hours because mapping it out but i'll give you a I'll give you a quick uh, glance and kind of how it moves along as soon as I get this cat back on his feet. <laughs> you know, they say they always land on their feet. So the neat thing about our work is in, in our collectors know and as we meet people, because of the way we break our work and put it back together, um, once you own our work, you never really... Um, you don't need to worry so much about if anything ever were to get broken because if the tail were to get broken we could take the tip of the tail and just make it a different color so um we like to do that yeah. if we, when we can and also as far as rittenhouse um had just put you've got our david scott um website but we also have a new one we're working on right now and that is scott art it's a new form that they're doing the dot art instead of dot com and the dot com, the dot art does have our um, lion, our new pieces on it. So Scott Causey dot art. I'm sorry, Rittenhouse, we had a problem with it. Our um, 
website was down the other day and we did get it back up, but it gets you. So we got hacked. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, we got a little craziness. So um, one of the questions we had was what kind of tape that's holding it so well enough. That, that's actually just masking just tape. Just regular masking tape. So he's using it, but he's using lots of pieces. And um, Kyle is um, saying he's letting us know that it is true that if your piece does get broken, that we do fix it. We do not <laughs> charge for repairs. Once you buy a Causey, you're going to have a Causey. So. All righty, look. Look at that kitty cat and his tail back on. Okay, so after I get it to this point, it's trying to move it a little closer for you guys to be able to maybe see some of the lines. Can move this. Maybe. Reach under here and grab my handy dandy. Can you maybe put it right here? We might be able to get a little closer. Or I can, I'll come closer to you. Go. Here we go. So it goes up here and then. And the lines, because for me, I'm still looking on the other side and I can't necessarily see. Here, let me help. Really well. Mm. We've got our two playing patty cake over there. We got our rabbit and our cat. And no. the cat. Okay, hold on. Let me go down here. There, now you guys can see a little bit. So. If this light will stay. So what he does now is he starts... Um, if I have a little chip, like this little tiny chip out of here, I'll make a mark. And I'll make any mark where I have any like... Uh, which was really good because I didn't have many of those. I don't know if you can spot yeah, that can, particular okay. section there. I just take my pencil and go through that. And then let's just say I'm going to move quick. I'm gonna put stripes on this tail. Well, that doesn't mean I'm doing the stripes right this second. It just means that uh, I'm mapping it out. Uh, that's that's the indication for me that it's gonna be a stripe. Yeah, and Charlie and Mark, we'll um, come back to you in just a second. We'll show you a little bit how we do that, um, how we decide once you do it. So what color is that head gonna be? Let's just say I'm gonna do it turquoise. So, but, that doesn't mean it's going to be turquoise at the end of the day because I'll do multiple firings and by the time it's over with it could look more like the back of the uh, the back of the bear, bear here. right there or we've also got a bear head with turquoise and just some other pearl over there so as you, as you see we're gonna have we do so many different firings this would be the first glaze that we mm -hmm. do each piece, like the legs and stuff, sometimes can go in the kiln five or six times. So let's see. And then, like, I'll do blue on this section of the body, which you probably can't even see these little hairline cracks running through here. So this turquoise won't run into that. Um, and like, I would, I'm always, I always love red, and red's like one of my signature colors. So I'd go up here and do a do a red. And let's just say I want it to be my matador red, which is my um, my brightest. But it, sometimes I'm layering glaze on top of that. So let's go yellow, and then back here, let's say orange. And then I would keep working the piece over and over until I got to the point where that was, you know, I. I decide where I want, you know, my stripes, and if I wanted circles made, I'd be able to, um, I'd be able to put circles on it. Um, I also have decals that I can use. I use uh, a clear cut machine to um, to cut out different shapes. And um, Jody's trying to find a uh, an, a, a sample of um, yeah, some of the well, shapes that are cut out. Well, so if you're going to maybe do stripes on a tail. My, these stripes aren't the ones that we would be using, but just to give you an idea, what we do, oh yeah, let's take that off first, okay. I'm gonna take the tail, take it off the tail. Can everybody see, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I'm not making you sick like you're on a roller coaster, because. <laughs> so, like this is just for masking, and if I, Take this across here. 
So we'd be making stripes. So then when it's time to glaze, he would glaze, say the tail's gonna be black and white. He'd glaze all black. And then after it was glazed black, he would pull those stickers off and then we would have the white area. And then you also ask about... I wanna show you how I do circles. So this is interesting. If you'll keep the camera on me and then okay. I'll be able to okay. show them a little trick I did. Yes, this is outside. All right, get ready for another roller coaster ride and then we place it. So when I want to make circles for some of my pieces, I can use a Cricut machine or I can use my potter's wheel. And usually he's using the potter's wheel because he likes to hand make them. Yeah, the, love the handmade ones. Sorry, we're really crooked right now, guys, but I'll help you. <laughs> uh oh, there we go. All right. So, so now, what, I'll, what I'll do is if I want to make a circle to go on like one of leg the, the leg of the dog or something like or that. Cat. People are always asking, how do you do your circles? So you just put masking tape on the wheel and now he's cutting the circle using the X-Acto knife. Uh, All right. Like so. cut out the circle and then Put it on the cat. Okay, why don't you show, pick up the, um, you've got the cat right behind you. Yeah. Over there, Scott, pick it up and you can show. Like, so, see the circle on his upper arm? That's how we do those circles. So, he cuts them out with the tape, puts them on there. Of course, that circle is not going on that cat right there to see. Um, when we go to do our stripes, we'll usually just tape off an area. Um, so we're using a lot of masking, and then we fire it the first time, then when it comes out of the kiln again, um, we'll do it again. They're like, watch out, Scott, because the cat's tail right there, you can see the stripe on the tail. You know, we fired that um, first, the red, and then we removed the tape, and then we went back after it was fired in the kiln, we did the orange, and then when it came out of the kiln again, then he did the um, gold on it. The gold is the last color um, that we fire. And do it, so. <laughs> I hope that this hasn't been too uh, too chaotic, and I, I don't know We've how got many. About five more minutes. We got about five more minutes of this. Well, we do our glazes. This is a glazing table here, um, and you see all the glazes and the sponges and water. And we use one of the biggest things. We use different brushes for each color, so we don't have to worry about the contamination on the brushes. Um, that's one way we get our really good reds because reds are easily contaminated. So those are all of our glazes over there. Um, and all the brushes over here. Yeah, I already showed all the brushes. And so, so yeah, this is where we live. <laughs> In this area. We've got these guys playing and let's see. And here's some more designs um, of, you know, different stickers and decals and things that we use. I hate this bear. It does not yeah, the have bear's his head. head needs to go back over there. So the bear, the bear now is completed. He's ready just to be finished and glued together. Um, and actually, when we say glue, it's not really glue. We use a two-part epoxy, which Scott's going to show you what is, that is. And yeah, that's what is, we use to um, put our pieces, you know, back together again. Yeah, it comes um, in a. And you mix the two parts, and so gluing an animal together can take almost a full day because of um, holding each piece and and do that. So, um, <laughs> I like to put the gold in place. Okay, yes, um, gold and silver. Well, actually, we don't use silver because we don't want any tarnishing. We go. use um, we use platinum, and yes, the market definitely affects um, the price. So uh, when we buy, we're buying at market value. In fact, we actually even get our glazes from Johnson Matthey out of Philadelphia. Um, Scott found them once when we were going to do a show. Um, we've been doing the shows at Rittenhouse, like gosh, 10 or 12 years now. We do it both in September and June. Um, so 
We also want to tell everybody today who is on here, um, if anyone's interested in purchasing any pieces off our website, please, you know, send us an email or message because we will give you um, a show special. So, you know, please contact us for that. That's the scottcosy.art. And um, Scott, here's the lusters he was going to show you. That's our lusters that we use the mother of pearl, gold, and platinum. So this is gold right here. And this is platinum. And you've probably got about $1,000 worth sitting there in front more, of you. More, more than that. In those little bottles. Uh, most people buy this in like a bottle that's like small. Two grams. That's two grams, about the size of half your pinky. Um, but we and get them made in. <laughs> but does anyone have any more questions? Like anything else? Um, this has been so much fun doing this today. Any questions out there? Let's thank you. Love the work. Thank you so much. This I appreciate really, it. You know, fun. Um, I'm just trying to see. That's something kind of new we've been doing on this dog here. You see the stripe down his front leg. That one turned out pretty cool. I especially the giraffe that we just finished back there. Now that has all the polka dots on it. Like we were just showing you how he cuts the dots out. The dog's leg has a circle on it. Hey Scott, will you um, turn the swan sideways for us? Because there you go. That's our swan. Cause she was looking. Her name's Bella. All of our pieces have names, um, so that's always fun. So if anyone ever wants to uh, special order a piece, um, we are more than happy to do that for you too. And we can make a dog collar. We can name it after your dog or something special. We just did a um, commission rabbit the last couple weeks, and it was. Um, they wanted, his wife was from Russia and he wanted us to put um, the name for rabbit in Russian. So we did that. So that well, was first time neat. ever writing in Russian. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why rabbits and cats? <laughs> I'll tell you, um, because earlier we just explained that I've been doing this since I was a child. I actually started out sculpting dogs and little animals and rabbits. Um, it was something I felt comfortable with. I've done figurative work. I've done a, a lot of, you know, different types of work in pottery and things like that. Because when I was, you know, when I graduated from high school, I thought I was going to go straight into being a ceramic uh, potter. Um, but the truth of the matter was that it came right back to what I'd always done as a child, and the animals were the things that were familiar to me and that I was comfortable with. And it also allowed me to exaggerate them or, or, or make them, you know, just in the way that I felt that they should be, not necessarily accurate. Um, I had no intention to do that. So uh, animals gave me, uh, it was a brilliant idea because I, I didn't realize then that people actually collect animals. It, it worked out pretty well. So very few people who own one of my pieces only own just one because they become addictive. Because <laughs> they're need a fun. They're, they're happy. <laughs> they're happy. So um, we just both want to say, um, you know, thank you for joining us today. And this was really fun. Rittenhouse Art Square Fine Art. We love you. Thank yes, you. Yes. Thank you so much. We miss you guys so this. much. And um, yep. So remember, it's scottcosy.art. Um, you can email us, send us a message, our phone number's on there if you have a thing. And like I said, if you saw anything today or you want us to do something for you, um, we'd be more than happy to do a show discount for you um, since we don't have our travel expenses this weekend. And um, so we love you guys. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs>